All right, mic check. Mic check. Earth lanes. <laughs> All right, let's see here. I think that's it. All right. All right, 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 right. <laughs> Turn that off. Back on. Okay. Cool. I think I'm set. Um, of course. Hopefully I sound okay. Um, I want to make sure. Sweet. I think I sound all right. Um, cool night. Awesome night. So this is our the live stream event for Teutonic Monsters. And really excited about it. Really excited to share it with, with you and uh, all that sort of good stuff. Uh, we're going to go into, let's see here. So... It's hard to believe it's here. <laughs> it's all seriousness. Um, but drop in your questions at any point in time uh, throughout this. I'm going to have a moment where we'll be able to get into some of those questions. And really, I mean, this has been <laughs> it's been a long road uh, to be able to get here. And a numerous amount of things that have have happened that... Um, well, just a ton of stuff has happened. I mean, not all honesty, this has been a, a seven year journey and there's been of just getting this book out and there's been pockets of where I've been able to do other comic books and that type of thing. The Last Colony and Man from Snowy River and then this one. And it's, there's been so many hurdles in the way that have kept this one from from happening <laughs> so it's so it's so hard to believe that that I'm finally here and I am feel blessed to have the opportunity to share that with you and for you to join in the conversation and again ask your questions all those sort of good things and then I'll we'll jump in from there um I want to show the trailer again. So we're going to start off with the trailer. We're going to start off with, and then we're going to go through, I actually want to go through kind of the, the book itself. All the little bits of the book. Show you a little bit of where I came from and where I started in making art and illustrations and all that sort of good stuff. And... I'm probably way too dark right now. So I'm dicking around with. That's a big word. <laughs> Might be a little bit better. Um, let me see here. Thank you. So the so we'll talk about the trailer, and then I want to go a little bit about the the story itself, where that story came from, how it came to being, and why why I ended up sharing it. And then we'll go into a little bit about my process of of the book. I'll show you a little bit of the art itself. And then we'll get into any kind of like as far as like the copy and all that sort of stuff and getting the copy and we'll go over all the crowdfund stuff, whatever. But we'll go over the cool stuff before that. And so first off, I, I, it's hard to believe that we're here. I, I can't, I literally, whew, <laughs> literally can't believe that we're here and um, that it's finally happening and it's finally taking place. So that's, that's huge, huge news. And then as, as far as the long road, for some of you that know or may not know that I, I, I taught um, at a university, had a wild experience there. Uh, I'm with an entirely different university, entirely different 
much better experience uh, where it was <laughs> it was bad to say the least it was just <laughs> vitriol might be the word I, I don't know it was just it was just really it was really tough going through that experience and I started my to go back 20 years earlier I had started actually my process of going through my MFA and I did a bunch of abstract art, which I, I want to show you a little bit tonight. And then I ended up with that of, of in comics. In a lot of ways, I think my, the abstract art really helped influence the entire process of why I ended up making comics in the first place. Because all my all my abstract art, I always wanted to put stories in them. I always found a way of like a stories, and I think that's where I wasn't being necessarily completely, at least artistically honest from, with myself, with my illust, and then ultimately ended up in, in illustrations. Because this this road of like twenty years, and at the beginning of that, where I've I really in a lot of ways lost my my best friend my dad and he was an and still is in many ways an awesome figure for me to continue to strive for and and do my best to to honor him as best as I possibly can and and it's weird how right at the tail the the right at the very beginning of starting my my MA he passed and then it's it's kind of crazy because now 20 20 years later this year February I'm it's almost like I'm closing a book end and that's why I like I'm I, I just closing this off this this step off and then moving on to to the next thing and i'm i'm just i'm really really excited about that and i and just I'm, I'm blown away that it's that's happening and, and here we are so so that, that's basically kind of a, a nutshell of like what what got me here in the first place and and how i i, I get to share that with you um in this this weird sort of of way and to have an opportunity to, to share that with you. And so with all that being said, I'm going to try my best. <laughs> so bear with me here in a second because I want to get the, the trailer up. And I first, which is that's not it. <laughs> I keep wanting to pop that up. But let me, let me go to this first. I'm going to do it this way. Part of it too, I'm learning this Streamlab business. There we are. All right, we'll make that the deal. Okay, there we go. And then I want to, give me a, we're gonna go here. We're gonna go here. And then, my computer's gonna crash. And there it is, there's that. that make sure this is it okay I think actually I want to show this one I think this is the one all right let's see how this works this this could be a complete bop <laughs> let's see
So there it is. There it is. There it is. Yay. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> so awesome. So awesome. I feel so good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Feels so good. And of course the music, it has to be epic. It must. Audio machine, thank you. <laughs> uh, if you haven't checked out their website, really cool stuff, really cool music. Plus there's Tom Cruise on the front, like the front cover of it. So really good stuff. I'm, I'm really happy with it and just super awesome. <laughs> Like I said, if you guys have any questions throughout any point of this, just jump in and what I want to do now. Okay. So we're going to do several things here. And I have a little bit of a spiel I kind of want to get through. And then, like I said, as far as questions and all that sort of stuff, as they spring up, as they come up. And they can be in questions about, about the artwork, how the artwork is made, all sorts of stuff. So throw that in, put that in the in there, and we'll just kind of roll from there. But really what the story is all about is if I would just boil it down to the, the most basic concept, it's about the impossible. And I, I ran into this story of how there was an it was based off of a, a fictional story. And it was actually sort of a time traveling story while at the same time sort of a, I don't know, what's it called? Like Stargate of going from one portal to another portal and all sort of that, that sort of good stuff. And there was a portion of it that really caught my eye of how these ancient giants <laughs> like David and Goliath sort of a thing have been rumored through history. Obviously this gets into fantasy and that sort of a thing. But the idea in intrigued me about, well, what if there were like giants that fought against the early Roman empire or, or Greek? So you hear these crazy stories, like 300 really gets into a lot of those really cool details that by Frank Miller amazing art where he gets into this whole story and, and certainly um, I think I liked Zack Snyder did really well with that and I think Zack Snyder also did well with I like Superman I know there's this whole like when he did the Man of Steel <laughs> it gets in this other topic of like Superman with red underwear or no red underwear <laughs> I don't know I, I don't like seeing the guy's underwear give me a break I know it's a part of the old school costume. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> it probably doesn't make me a, a true comic disciple, but here nor there. In any case, the idea really intrigued me about having Romans fighting against a giant. And this sort of David and Goliath sort of story. But the other thing that intrigued me was how... I, w I really wanted to turn, because I had gone through, I, I would, I'd been told, I was told in high school that I was not going to, there was no way I was going to excel in college. None whatsoever. I was just, I, and honestly, I think I had probably like a, I'd have to ask my, my parents, but I think I had like a third or fourth grade reading level. I mean, just terrible by the time I was, I graduated high school, which is kind of a miracle that I even graduated high school. And then I went through, was it three? Two, three, three additional years through college, barely making it at that level at a fourth grade reading level. Like I had made it that far along. And then when I got to, I just was like, okay, I can't do this anymore. And one of the things that throughout that entire time is comic books have always been 
a place within that where I had always had sort of a place of of being a part of of just at least I if I couldn't read the words or didn't understand the words I could at least pick just understand it through through visual which is kind of also interesting because of that time Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings were the only books that I like I dug in deep <laughs> and I was going to read them it took forever to read them but I was going to read those books and by far they are my, my favorite my favorite books they I love these books and that also led to where when I finally got through all of that stuff and I ended up relearning how to read, I learned kind of my style of reading and, and went through all that sort of good stuff. And I, I, I started to, to, to get a taste for the impossible. One of the things, if I step back just a second, is that I, when I played college ball for soccer, that was the thing that just... A lot of ways kept me going and there was one point I felt like quitting but because it was just the coaching was just crazy and it just weren't the right that's in their story <laughs> I'll just leave that story out of it but one of the things that my my dad shared with me that I will always treasure is that he in watching me play soccer and goalie he was always amazed how I would just willing to throw myself at it with no rich, complete disregard to my physical and come out with awesome stuff. And that sort of idea, and that happened all around this sort of same time when I was learning, relearning how to read and re-going back to the basics and not necessarily just seeing the words by shape, I would, I would actually see the words by shape, which is kind of interesting because when you go back with words or, or text, any word that has ever existed or any letter that's ever existed, you can easily take it back to its, its origins. So like, for example, the letter A, you turn it upside down, you have an ancient version of an olive, which is a Hebrew word for, for a Hebrew letter for, for A. It's actually a silent letter in Hebrew, but regardless, but if you take that even further back, it's, it's a, it's a, um, it's a cow. It represents a cow. Or I guess a heifer. <laughs> Whatever. In any case, it, it represents something. And so I, I just pictorially see everything in that or visually see it. And so when I ended up Going back through and reading, this idea of impossible kept, kept coming to mind. The impossible. Where I, I was literally told in high school, which is where I wanted to start out with, in high school I was told, you're not going to make it, you're not going to make it college, forget about it. You're not going to make it. There's no way. And just feeling, and my parents also feeling at the same time, it's like, no, he's smart enough. He can do this. And then I think through certain tools, I most certainly can do it. But through time and again, I think the biggest, if I could use this word, demon that I have faced throughout my entire life, it has been, has been discouragement. And there's been little moments from, I mean, even back from my earliest moments of, of memory where when I went into school for the first time and all the way up to third grade, I was busting it. I was just like, I was doing it. And then at third grade, it just all stopped. And it was, it started all because of some knucklehead. It was just, it started from discouragement. And so this, this idea of discouragement has been throughout my entire thing, my entire being, my physical being. And it ended up, I mean, to the point that after I started to learn how to read, junior in high school, into my senior, senior junior in college, excuse me, into my college years, final college year, I did two seniors <laughs> at college. At least I wasn't, was that Chris Farley? <laughs> Not Chris Farley, but uh, Tommy Boy, who <laughs> was senior for 10 years, 
Call them doctors. Any case. Up at the, that point, I'd started to really grab on to this impossible. And I started to do things that like were just, it'd be sort of like flashes in a pan where I'd jump out and do this crazy thing of, of writing a letter to, to nobody would listen to. And, and things happened. I can get into all that sort of cool stuff with Lord of the Rings at another time. An amazing story. Awesome story where I've... I'll get into that later. I don't want that to be the focus of tonight with The Last Colony, or excuse me, Teutonic Monsters. But this idea of the impossible. And so 20 years later, here we are now, tonight, today, it's this idea of accomplishing the, t the impossible where there has been so many times of just ditch this project, it's done, I can walk away, goodbye. I went through the review, terrible first review. I think I was I, in that review process, when you go through, a, you present your thesis and all that sort of good stuff, and in your presentation of your thesis, I happened to be the last person of that day for that committee. And by that point, they're tired, they're cranky, they're, <laughs> they're over and done with as far as they're, as far as what they want to, I don't know, they were just done. They were done. One of them was not. He at least had a little bit of, of energy left in him, and I appreciated that. But just terrible. And then something happened where I had, so that was in a year that was in May 2023. So that was May 2023. And then my stuff got lost. University forgot about it. <laughs> forgot about me. And it was just like, again, this idea of impossible. I just kept knocking at the door, knocking at the door, knocking at the door. And then this whole thing came up again where I could... I worked with the, the professor that I had been working with previously. She saw my stuff, and it kind of rained from there. And the really cool thing about it is that that committee in particular, she gave me this, this little bit of a window to say, we know you're going to complete this. We trust that you're going to complete this project. Fast forward now, there's been a, a dozen things that have happened um, and again, I can talk about those sort of things later on at some point in time of what those mean and what that is and, and all those little pieces. Okay, my, some sort of thing popped up. Who knows? I'm not sure what it is. We'll open it again. No big deal. So, yeah, I'll find it again. So... With that being said, it was this, this, it's been this huge journey of impossible. And in a lot of ways, that's, that's the, the nutshell of this story is from the impossible, from that impossible of taking it into a place that is, um, that is, that is meaningful and that I have, um, I don't know, that I, I just have a, a, a feeling for, that I just have a, a clear understanding of. Um, so, so yeah, so that's that's kind of the, the, the whole story there. Um, Translate this into this now. Um, so I, I just, it's it, the story is about the impossible, but I wanted to turn it on its head. And... One of the other things about it is that we can't completely discount the impossible so that it, uh, I think I lost something here I had up. Give me a second. Oh, let me bring it back to here. This is me doing this real time. <laughs> Return this, give me this here. So thank you for hanging out, all that sort of good stuff. Let me. <laughs> I 
Yep, my impossible giant is work. Man, we all got giants. One well, really good movie. It's a little bit more of a Christian view, but it's a really good movie. Excellent message is facing the giants of just overcoming. Uh, I really love the idea of, you know, you, you praise God when you lose, you praise God when you win. And it, because it's, it's not about, again, that's a much bigger subject, but there's more to it. There's much more to it. And that we are, I think in a lot of ways, we are destined to overcome and, and to become the impossible. Again, you can look at the world around you and see impossible everywhere you look. Everywhere you look. I mean, it's, there's, there's no single place where you, you can look and you go, oh my God, that's, that's bad. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's out there. Okay, I think now we have some jams in the background. <laughs> the important stuff, right? A little bit of vibing. Let me know if you can't hear the music or if it's too loud or whatever. We'll figure it out. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. Okay, okay. Now we got the silly stuff out of the way. <laughs> stuff that doesn't matter. I need to bring down my voice down just a little bit. Okay. So here's the here's the show. So, oh, I wanted to do this too. Let me bring up. Let me go to the right page here. Not quite sure why this is. Of course, <laughs> I have this all set up previously and then it's like, no, no, you don't. You don't have it set up. <sighs> we'll get it going here. Okay. Okay. Let's do, let me do it this way. Yes, add a new one. Quite sure. Uh, <laughs> and it's all sophisticated way. <laughs> so I ran into this poem here. <laughs> Let's just drink it down for that. All right, you guys are awesome. Okay, so ran into this poem. And actually, if you go watch Oblivion with Tom Cruise, this poem is actually in that, that movie. And I think you could probably argue that movie takes a, a really cool vision of it. 
but this this basically it, it I don't know it inspired me it kind of got me going and so and certainly I put it in the in the trailer but the captain at the gate to every man upon this earth death cometh soon or late and how can man die better than facing fearful odds for the ashes of his father fathers in the temples of his gods absolutely beautiful <laughs> like awesome <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things is that this part of the book or this anyway thomas lays of ancient rome it really kind of because i was going through like okay what story do i want to pick and you have to go through and you have to pick a story for your thesis and all this sort of stuff and then what i this poem was just a i think it was just a really cool capturing the moment it kind of really got me spilling into the whole entire process and again, it's this idea of this, this David versus Goliath, the idea of like temples of our gods and, and the ashes of our fathers that really captured, I think, just the overall idea of what I wanted to, to share in, in my story and to get it to a place that was that was basically to get it to a place that was we, we never want to un... And I guess that goes back to like what I was bringing up, the whole idea of the impossible, that we never want to underestimate our, our enemies or even our, 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 our compadres or friends. We never want to un, just underestimate anybody because of the potential that exists within that, that space. And so that, that's the whole idea of like David and Goliath. It's this, it's this nobody kid that picks up a rock and slings it at the, the most impossible and brings down an empire and starts a new empire type of a thing. And that's, that's kind of the whole thing. And obviously we're getting interrupted by a, an ad here. But it, it really brings in this whole idea of, of being more than, than just our, the potential that we have to be more. And that's that's really where this this story kind of comes the story comes into, where we can never underest we we can never overestimate or underestimate our the potential of of what we're up against, because ultimately what it could mean is that we grow beyond what we perceive to be our basic capabilities and those types of things. And it goes back to like discouragement of never letting, and it's easy to do, man. I, I, I fall trapped to it just about every day, but I just, it's just one piece at a time, one moment at a time. And that's something that I've, I've tried my best to learn more recently of just one piece, one little thing, and really focusing on that to be able to get to those next things. And that's, that's gets to really the, the heart of the entire thing. And that also gets to, the, the whole storytelling process and this why sharing this story is I think is so it's it's having the opportunity to share it with you is is really really cool because it that there's there's just something more right we have something more to be able to do and to and to share in that type of a thing so one of the quotes that I, I put into the book that I thought was really cool was a positive thinker sees the invisible feels the integral and achieves the impossible and that's something that is also was a, a huge impact along the way of of seeing this through that that it, it's it's the grit I, it's one of the reasons why i like true grit so much is that it, it's a great story be it the old one or the even the remake's pretty good too but it's the idea of achieving the impossible, that we have to see the invisible. We have to see these things. We have to anticipate these things. And that no matter how improbable or impossible it is, that's why I like, I think part of it too might be the I, why I like the word impossible because it, if we break down the word, and that's one of the cool things about my background in Hebrew is that if we break down a word, you can have a particular word, but then there's words within words. And it, I, impossible means I am possible. And it's an entirely different take on a situation that looks just ridiculous. 
And I think it's also one of the crazy things about like, oh no, it's the clips and all this sort of stuff. When in reality, it means that, oh my gosh, we need to take a more purposeful look at our lives if we would break that down. And again, that's a much bigger discussion, but I think that these concepts keep falling in, at least into play where I am. And so the story of, and I'll just kind of flip through kind of talk about each of one of these pages maybe a little bit but some of the inspiration behind it really was well for example like if you look at well <laughs> you can't do a roman story these days and not look at the movie the gladiator and i guess they're making a gladiator too <laughs> who would have thought that they're making gladiator too so which apparently <laughs> Apparently, um, someone was asking Russell Crowe about it. You have to look it up. And he was all he was all a little bitter about it. I don't know if he was or wasn't, but he was a little annoyed by the question. So there's definitely moments of that, of trying to capture some of those ideas, some of those... those I, I like the idea of, in particular with like the gladiator, and one that I wanted to depict here, was being in control of, of the environment in being in control of your environment and the importance of maintaining that control and maintaining that, that stoic quality. And certainly from our character's point of view, he maintains that stoic quality, but then... <laughs> so, and I think I showed this one in the trailer. I had a lot of fun with this trumpet right here of displaying this little trumpet and getting a little bit of perspective. or And I, the cool thing is we're connecting this picture and this picture and we'll also have a zoomed-in picture. Some of the professors didn't like that one. They can piss up a rope. <laughs> so fun to say. Um, and basically just, it's in a lot of ways, the story is about the Romans dominating. Because that's what Roman, when we think of Rome, we just think of dominance, absolute dominance. And then, we, of course, we add a little asterisk at the end <laughs> where they ended up eating themselves alive type of a thing. And maybe this story is the beginning of those ideas. I don't know. Of course, sacrificing your sword. We love it. Sort of cool stuff here. I'm going to fly by. So this captures some of it for you. Just a little bit of that. Some of the things that this was actually one I didn't turn in. I I deliberately <laughs> speaking of thesis is here. I deliberately left pages out because I didn't want anyone sticky fingers over them. So that's what this page is. This is a page where I don't want your sticky anyone sticky fingers on them. You either like the artwork and you want to support it or you don't. Apparently Ridley Scott, I'll pause for a second. So Ridley Scott is doing, is doing the movie. I, oh, who's in it? You have to look it up. I can't remember who's doing it, but I, I, Ridley Scott is the, is the director without a doubt. I just know Russell Crowe was bitter. Or bitter about the question. I think he was bitter about the question. Now, as far as the book goes, I'm going to skip. I'm going to jump up here because I want to skip ahead. So, as far as the book goes, this is about 64 pages. And the, pay, the comic itself is 22 pages. Yeah, so I should. I think I've shown this one before. So... This one, this one's out there. Love this one. Just the, had a lot of fun. This one I left to the, myself. I didn't want anyone's sticky fingers over them. <laughs> Just didn't want it. Nope. Let's see here. Skip, 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 skip. So the page, there's 22 pages. And I only did one spread page. That was one thing they really picked on in graduate school is don't do too many pages that are not spread, whatever. So you get one spread. 
But then, I'll show you this part too here. So this, so I have, so I basically you get the comic book twice in here. So you'll get the, the comic itself, the colored version. And I have a few pages in here that's just straight black. So this is a straight black. I need to add text in here. So that's, that's one thing that needs to be done. Anyway, but I also wanted to show the comic again in its raw form, in just its black and white form. Almost like a, because one of the cool things about that I really like and about comics is its quality of when movies were first introduced in the turn of the century type of a thing. And that sort of, and that's certainly where like, where you, of course with comics you have words that go in between. When I was in eighth grade, there was a project where you had to do is I think it was a social studies project. In the social studies project, you had to choose a job of what you wanted to be when you grew up. And then with that job, with what you wanted to be with you when you grow up, you then ended up make, you know, do a term paper and all this sort of stuff. Well, I went to my teacher and I actually I asked her, I was like, hey, can I do a can I do an animation? Because anima animator was one of the things on that list of like there's a list of all these jobs and animator was one of them. And so it's kind of funny, I think, having the roots in like in this has taught me that of of that storyboarding. Because that's basically and then I really want to take animation, but I want to do it, and I've been playing with the idea of like, this is long term, but like doing the comic with The Last Colony, but doing, taking The Last Colony and making animation with it. Because I think music is also a really important quality to have, speaking of music, and having that quality around I think is really, really important. So some of these pages, like, let me go back real quick. So this one was all done by hand. So this is all black ink. And then I did, actually with this one, I think this digital water watercolor. Digital watercolor, digital watercolor. This one was by hand watercolor, water, 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 water color watercolor say that 10 times fast watercolor so this is all watercolor this is normal this is digital but i did do the ink by hand so all of these were done by ink by hand there was only really two of them i think this one i did all by this is 100 percent digital i think on this one and i kind of go from there you don't want to show too much of the story here um I want to spoil it for you. So, skip past, skip past, skip past. So this one, let me go to this one. I keep showing this one. So this one was a combination, where it's digital, but then it's all inked in in black and white. So that's 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 all inked, and then the cool thing with like, and I think like these little splats right here. Those splats are actually like, I use like a toothbrush or some sort of thing with white ink to get some of that. But then like this highlight right here, this um, backlighting, this rim lighting, what they call it, that I think is digital. So like right in here, that's all digital. Oops, go back. Oh, okay. So then I have, this is one project that really propelled into the entire process. And it, that's, that's on my front page of like my website and that type of a thing. Uh, so that's where that is. And then there's this one, which in these next two weeks, thereabouts, I'm going to be coloring this one and I'll do some live streams on that and I'll be coloring this one. So these are what they, in, in, they call in a flat stage. So it's in a flat they call them flats. So it's, it's inked. I did this, I inked by hand, watercolor by hand, and then digitally color it and all that sort of good stuff. Same thing here. Now this one's completed. And then I have a few pages of my script. Kind of just the breakdown of that. 
So some things like when you go from a script, some things get cut and don't make it. Sometimes it changes based upon the words and that type of a thing. And so it just, it, it alters it just a little bit. And so those are just a, a few of those things. And so this is the raw first script. And I, you can see some of these panels were cut out altogether. Uh, let's go keep going along here. So I add a bunch of pages of that. And then I have, I did two pages of this where I added in just kind of, I was doing a bunch of just renders of the real, really the style and the, the quality that we wanted to go for. And so I had that in here too. And then I have several pages of this where I've just worked on character designs, silhouettes, just really basic stuff. Each of the main characters, so you have the Celts. I was really, I really wanted her to get in here, but it just, so she got cut. Sorry, sorry, lady. Sorry, sorry. representation. Hey, representation right here. She's in it. I represent. <laughs> like this He-Man with just the, speaking of underwear, Superman. <laughs> Good old Celts. And then, of course, we got the Romans. And then one really cool thing is just writing down different ideas that you have and connecting them. And so that's kind of where that all kind of comes in. And then let me get into some of the giants and that sort of thing. So six feet tall and then rough size of our giants here and playing around with our giant designs and different things. I kind of ended up in this area. One of them, I thought this would be really cool to have like shields on his shoulders or that type of a thing. That would be kind of cool, but... I digress. More Romans, just Roman soldiers playing with their shields, all that sort of good stuff. <laughs> Who's this character? <laughs> that's a little weird. Then there's me, and then, uh, yeah, so that's the book. So that's about 64 pages um, total, which is really cool. And that's that's the book. That's That's the nutshell of the book. Oh, one thing that I did want to show you, I'll show you this too. Let's see if I can bring it up real quick here. Okay, so with this, this is basically how, when I start out a page, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit for you guys. So when I start out a page, this is about what I start out with. I'm just thinking about it like I'm, these are real terrible scribbles. No one can make any sense out of any of this. <laughs> No, nothing. You can't make out any sense of this. And then you, I will dissect it further in like some of these, like, so for this one is this one. And just trying to, I don't know. I was a kid that grew up with weebles. If you know what weebles are, I have weeble people. <laughs> if you got weeble people, I got weeble people. I think Weeble people were like my first introduction. It's like Weebles and then there's Legos kind of a thing. If you know what, again, Weebles. <laughs> look, at, look at Weebles. <laughs> the little block plastic people about yay big. And they have a round head, basically like a ball. And then a cylinder body. <laughs> that's, that's about it. So I, I draw Weeble people. And then from the Weeble people, let me go to the next page. From there, I kind of, I'll break it up a little bit further. I'll break it up a little bit further and just thinking in terms of black and white shapes and gray tones and these type of things. And that helps kind of break it up and, and understand just a little bit more. And then from there, I'll end up picking just a few. You can see I starred some of these right here. And then I'll go into this where I'm actually trying to design these out. And I'm using, uh, it's, and this is actually, this is the cover. And you kind of see with the cover, I ended up with something like this and this. But I also like this idea right here where he's kind of, he's jumping at you type of a thing. Same thing, sort of thing here. So we kind of ended up with a few of the blends. And you kind of see a few of the different designs. And then from there, then it kind of branches out and ends up into something like, something like this. 
and then from there, and then actually here's some of that inspiration where I'm looking at different like thing. You can see I, actually this horse ended up pretty much in there, but I ended up having to play around with his legs a little bit to add a little bit more action involved. And you can see some of these characters ended up in there, thinking about shadows, all that sort of stuff. Cool. And then here's just kind of a rundown of armor and all the research that went into all that sort of cool stuff. And then from there, <laughs> I like how this finger's like bent <laughs> in a weird way, but whatever. Uh, so that kind of keeps rendering in a little bit further. And it goes to something like that, which is pretty cool. And then, yeah, get back up. So it goes to something like that. And this is all digital while well, I end up drawing this digital. So that I get it pretty close to being finished at this point. And I go through and ink it and further into there. Now, this one actually, and then there goes the flats, and then this one. But this one, you can actually see that this is not the final. You can see there's some similarities happening here, but it's not quite it. And so that's where, bring it back, and go back to, Let me go back to the cover here. A lot of pages, okay. So that's where with like our cover here, we ended up with something a little bit different. One is I ended up making it a little bit more intimate. I, this is a, a little bit bigger. I should show them side by side. Let me do that. So you can see here the shields are a little bit different. He's he's right in your face. He's right in there. Where this one, it just it was didn't quite fit. The other thing is, is that there's a little bit more action going on where there's nothing right here. You can see there's actually a few more people back here. This weird this guy charging in. He's gonna murder somebody. Uh, and that and then you can see that the legs ended up changing back to. Um, let me bring that up quick here. So you see the, the legs ended up changing a little bit closer to this combination of this. So that's kind of one of the things is you find different references and you're not always able to, but you kind of have to play around with it. And I think like this hoof is this hoof right here, but even then it's still changed up just a little bit to match the overall thing that you're going for, right? So there's all that, there's that. And so, yeah, that's, that's basically where it ended up. Now, let's do, let me do it this way. Now for this, I will want to show, yeah, we'll do it this way. Okay, so with all that being said, if you... Shoot, I messed that up. Uh, so, with all that being said, if you feel so compelled to to join in into the crowdfunding campaign, you are humbly invited to participate in that and get your get your copy. And so, to do that, the link is actually in. If you go to your the description for to taunt the uh, YouTube page here. Let's see here. Let me make sure we have that up. So if you go into the description for the, you can actually, you'll be able to click on it. And it's uh, Tikva, it's tikvapatron.com slash, and I have those products, and then it goes into and does the, the whole thing there. So just do, you can bring up a tab or whatever you do. And then it will bring up, so the, it, the link's in the description. And from there, then we have our crowdfund. And today, we're, the really cool thing about this project is that I, I, I think with like, um, man, with The Last Colony, we did this for like, like 
I think I did it for like 60 days and it was just way too much for me. And it was being that the fact that this was a miracle to even get this thing launched in the first place. And actually I probably should, let me do it this way so you can see the whole page. Cause you're only, I think you're only seeing part of the page here. Oops. Oh, you're seeing the whole thing. Okay. Okay. So with this, because it took, I keep doing that. It, it took so long to get this project going. <laughs> I'm just like, all right, we're only doing this for, for so long. So even that, that being said, you can, there's several ways to, to back this project. You kind of go through all those little different things. So one is, is if there's some sort of monetary value that you want to add in, uh, you can go ahead and do that. And you can add in that amount. Now, it will be, now, if you want to go ahead and you're like, you know what, I, I don't, I, I just want to, I don't want to give this amount. You can do more, you can do less, that type of thing. If you do less though, and reason why 27 is kind of the, the tier there and that's actually the first reward. If you want to do something else, then you can just go straight to the uh, patron page and the patron page and you can follow this, Q, this QR code and do your, do your Venmo sort of a thing. And I would do it that way. Otherwise, there's a whole other story, many other things that I'm not gonna go into, but the website had to change and had to go through different hands and that sort of thing. And when it went through different hands, this this element changed. It's it's just the way it is, and so it automatically adds in a shipping to that. So if you want to just give a basic amount to the project, and in the Vimo when you do it, just type in Tikva or do the Teutonic Monsters, add that in, and then you'll be able to get that in. And then along with that, so there's that way. So you can back that way if you want to do whatever amount. And then the other is that, so what we'll do is that for the 27, you're basically going to get a signed copy of, a, of your comic. And then with your signed copy of your comic, I'm going to add in a few stickers and those sort of things. So I like doing that, that sort of stuff. And then there also be, actually I should show you. And then there should all, there also be print off a really nice little folder or actually a, a printout of the artwork and that'll actually end up in there too. And I also do like the throw in a bookmark or that type of thing. So this is one of them that I have. Make sure you can see that okay. So this is one I have a little sticker. <laughs> Gotta have a sigil going. And then let's see what else I have here. And then I have a cool little unicorn decal of my logo. So we'll throw that in there too. So, and then, so that's, that's the 27 and then that doesn't include shipping. So none of these include shipping. So just be aware that a lot of these, as long as you're shipping in the continental United States, I think even Alaska, Alaska might be like $14, but in the continental United States, it's going to be about $10. So just be aware of that, that it's gonna be an addition. So you, you'll have your, instead of 27, it's 37 and 37, it'll be your, your 47. So just be aware of that. And then with your, your 37, uh, your next reward kind of, you'll get two signed copies. And then of course the surprised artwork or surprised artwork will be included in that. If we do really well, I'll also include that with our 27 group. So don't feel, if you don't feel obligated of like, oh no, I need, I'm just, that's all I got. Well, that's okay. Again, we'll include that in there too. And I think I have it highlighted. No, I can't highlight, but there's a surprise where artwork will come with that too. And then instead of the two books for the 37. And then from there, I've, we've had one person jump in and grabbing the, some of the original art. So there's actually one right behind me, right there. So that's an original artwork right there. So I will actually, I'll ship that original artwork to you. And then there's a few pages that I kind of, I really wanted to hold back. And that are the original artwork 
of this, these guys right here. And so that kind of gets into that bracket. And then the cover art, if you're interested in buying the cover art, there's that. And then for the next round up, <laughs> which is holy moly, guacamole, that one I'll make original art for you. <laughs> Like, seriously, if you're paying that much, you need original artwork, including copies and all that sort of stuff. So that kind of break that down. And then certainly on this uh, page, you'll find all the kind of the artwork that we were just kind of, I was skimming through with you. Now, as far as what we plan to do with the project, our goal is that, so this project will, this crowdfund will only be up and it will end on get my date right see my calendar right there so it'll end on the last day to participate in this crowdfund will be the 19th at midnight so once the 19th at midnight hits this crowd this campaign's done I'm doing this only for Eight days. I only have energy for eight days because <laughs> we got to get moving on to other things. I want to get this done and I want to get on to Last Colony and for God's sakes, finally have that done. There's a couple of things I want to do with that project. So I have that rolling. Then with that, after that is kind of the next thing that let's see here. Oh, so is once this is done on the, the 20, the, excuse me, the 19th. And what we'll do is I will send, get, well, at that point, we should be crowdfunded. Speed run, no doubt. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is fast. We're not, we're not screwing around here. We got other things to do. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done with this project so much. It was good. I absolutely love it. This is, Heart was poured out, but this is 20 years in the making, so I'm done with it. I'm ready to move on. And last colony, that's that's like that's like only five years old, four years old. I mean, that's nothing. So this is easy. So what we'll do is, like I said, the book is pretty much finished. Over these next couple weeks, I will be, and actually, I'll be working on this one tonight, and then we'll do another. I'll do another live stream. I'll do a Q&A kind of answering sort of basic questions. I'll share that out tomorrow. And then if you, whatever question, that sort of thing. And then on the 19th, I'll do another live stream where I'll kind of show you the work, show you the progress of this work. And we'll do basically a celebration of, yay, we did it, sort of a thing. And then once that happens, that following week, I will put compile all this. I have a, basically on my calendar where I have a week where I put everything together. Let me see here. Let me bring up another do. There we go. go to my calendar here. Okay. So what we'll do is that that basically the 22nd through the 26th, that whole week is all about um, getting the book together, getting the manuscript together, getting everything prepped and, and finalized. And I will actually, at the midweek to end of that week, I will send out a test version to make sure all the cuddlers are, so I have a, a publisher already picked out, the print, print house already picked out, and they'll print that test version. I'll get that back. And that might take, it might take a few weeks. I don't know exactly. Sometimes at worst that can take up to a month. So that kind of puts us all the way back to the end of May. And that's where like the rewards for this were all the way back to, uh, I, basically I wrote in the rewards. I think I can do it by May, but again, that's why I put Q2 at the end of that. So what we'll do is then once I get that back and I say, hey, this correction needs to be made. Oops, I forgot a misspelling. It just gives me a chance to go through and 
find any last minute edits. Like I said, I've chromed over this thing so many times, I'm tired of seeing it. However, you have to, you always have to go back and reread and reread and reread. So that's, that's just the nature of it. That's perfectly fine. So what I'm guessing is sometime by the end of May, it could happen sooner, but again, setting expectations that then once that happens, I'll send that off to print. We'll get all of our copies. They get shipped to me. And that again, in the past that, like I said, at worst, it could be a month at best. It's about two weeks. Once that happens, I get it in my hot little hands. I'll give you a kind of a progress report. And then throughout this entire time, I'll be giving progress reports of, hey, this is happening. This is where this is at, or this is happening. This is where this is where this is at. And if you are backing the project, you will be getting emails of, as to the exact process of what that looks like. Now, after that time frame, what you'll, you'll do is then I will get everything ready and it'll get shipped off and sent off on its, on its nice little merry little way. And then, then you have it in your hands. And of course, I'll be signing all the copies and all those sort of things uh, along the way. So that's, that's the process in a nutshell. So <laughs> just a baby. What's this? Just a baby. <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, hey, this, this is like a baby. <laughs> um, and then certainly, yeah, no, I would certainly be happy to share speed videos. And I think one of the things I've been wanting to do actually with this channel is that this goes into a higher other thing of like this entire project and um, into what is fighting the algorithm on all this sort of stuff. And I, and certainly teaching is a huge thing. And so that's kind of what all those sort of things. And so, yeah, most certainly speed videos and that sort of thing will uh, be definitely a component because one of the things I really want to get into and start doing is workshops, how to develop a comic book, how to do all this sort of stuff. I mean, this, this, <laughs> I, I, it would be wrong of me to hold on to this experience by myself and, and not share it to the world. So, so there is that. And I think that's, that's basically, that's basically it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. So you're welcome to hang out. Keep hanging out. Let's see here. If anything, is there anything I need to look at? Cool, cool. I think that's it. Okay. So what I'd like to do now is I'll actually just do a little bit of work. Excellent. Okay. And then one of the weird things about the website is that I actually have to up manually update it. So all that sort of good stuff. So I do have an editor. <laughs> Without the editors, I would be nothing. <laughs> so yes, I, I appreciate my editor. I hope my editor appreciates me. I think she does. Pretty sure she does. But that takes work, right? <laughs> takes work every every day. All right, we're doing good. Put on my trusty glove. <laughs> that way when you slide on the surface, you can slide on the surface. You don't want to stick up to the surface. <laughs> we don't want to do that. So, let's 
let's see here. It's been a while since I've looked at this. So you have, I'm just gonna talk through this right here. So I have this broken down. So you have like your, any text or that sort of thing will end up in there. FX end up there. Oh, I f you can do this too, which is kind of cool. And this actually helps you out quite a bit. called BW, black, white. And then what we'll do is zoom way out. And then I'm going to do, I think you, Q. So what that does is it just allows me, so sometimes your, your color can really goof up things. So you can see because your color has to, each color will have a value to it. And so that's kind of where that, that comes in. Do, 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 do. Close up that, don't need that. Delete that. Look at this. Okay, go back to here. So I like putting the, the black and white version up because that just gives me a little bit of a play with it. And it just allows me to, to, I can quickly go back. So anytime I can make changes or that sort of thing, and I'm not like, I don't know if it, it looks correctly because actually if you, it's kind of actually one of the sad stories you, of uh, the movie Wish has recently come out. And there's a particular scene in Wish where the lamb and our, your main character is kind of at the top of the set of stairs and there's kind of like flanking like I don't know, military guys holding flags and that sort of thing. But the problem is it feels really flat. And it's actually really sad because Disney is, was always known that's why, like, Toy Story and that type of thing is always known as these, like, massive in innovators. And now because the, it's all about the message <laughs> and expressing the message that they've forgotten. And they apparently, word is, they have deliberately um, stepped away from. Uh, and these are, these, are, these are discussions happening in inside circles that... Um, I'm connected through through my illustration and that sort of thing, and they're just they're just they're they're in, they're in shock because and this is why we do this this black and white version right here because then I can look at it and go okay 
this is blending into this and that tells me, okay, I need a highlight there or some sort of thing to separate out the space so it doesn't feel so flat because when I look at it right now, it, it's flat. Or, or if, if you just look at it just like this, you're like, uh, it, something's off about it. What's, what's off? And that's where by going to here, you get a different view of it and you go, oh, okay, well, it's, it's flat. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you're asking a question about ink. Uh, <laughs> hold on, give me a second. Don't go anywhere. So there is, oh, bu 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 it is hidden away somewhere. I'm hidden away right now too. Tub. Yeah, you're asking a whole can of worms question, and I want to give a correct answer here. Oh, here it is. I'll bring out two options for you. I had two options for you. Okay. Speedball will work really well. <laughs> okay. So speedball is actually a really good one. The other, actually I have this all taped, is Holburn. Holburn makes a really good ink. Any of the inks that the Japanese use? <laughs> Any of the inks that the Japanese use is really good. Any of the pins. I don't like any of the speedball pins. I should just bring the whole tub over here. This is really good. <laughs> You're like, what are you doing? Got my toy box now. Uh, let's see here. What do we got in here? What toys? <laughs> where are my good pins? Do I have them up here? I don't even know where my... I haven't inked in so long. <laughs> I like the Micron pins the best. They work really well, Micron pins. But if you do also the... Uh, Coptic pins work really well too. I'm currently using a lot of Coptic pins. They're really nice. Do I have that? No. I got toothbrushes. <laughs> what do we got here? What do we got here? See, you, you, you asked a massive question. I don't have any of my nice ballpoints. Not my ballpoints, but my um, cool pins. I don't know where they are. It's been a while since I've used them. But basically, any of this speedball stuff, I'll have to find it later. I'm not seeing it. Any of this speedball stuff is good. Hallburn is better. That stuff is good. And I like any of the Japanese inks really good. I would recommend them. If you're still not doing, if that's not working for you, certainly the Coptic, Coptic markers or pins work. But then there's this. This is the, this is the real deal. I don't know if I can put it up there. This thing. This is actually Gutenberg Press. This ink right here I got from Germany is actually from and used on the Gutenberg Press. This is the same recipe. <laughs> this is my pride and joy. This is almost like a, um, a fine wine that you're never gonna, 
You never open, you never use. <laughs> but the nice thing about this ink, and don't tell me to pronounce any of this name. <laughs> so don't, don't ask. It's all in German. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But this ink is the real deal. <laughs> like seriously, go to Germany. They actually sell it in England. I think they do. I believe I, I got this from a store online. There's only one store. I don't even know if they're still around. This is pre-COVID. But they ship this thing out to me. I don't remember what I paid for it. It was a lot of money. <laughs> Seriously, this is like one of those, this, what, what, this is one of those cognacs that's like, I don't know, is this $100? I don't want to tell. Maybe my wife's watching and then she'll go, oh my gosh, you paid $300 for this bottle? I didn't, I didn't, wife, if you're watching. I promise. It was not $300. <laughs> but this thing is the real deal. This is the real deal ink. It is the blackest of blacks, darkest of darks. It's, it's awesome. I mean, there, it, there's a reason why it was used for the Gutenberg press. I mean, you, you, I mean, this is literally the best ink in the world. So best ink in the world. Enjoy. <laughs> Don't spill it because every drop spilt is priceless, literally. <laughs> well, it's, ex it is price. Uh, yeah, you get it. Um, so inks at Speedball, kind of your low end. Paul Burns good. And then World Cup quality here. <laughs> I think for all of this, I may have you for this one, I used, one of the nice things about the ink is just how thick it is, is that it, it just, it, it's really nice and thick. And that's where like your, these Copic markers are really good because they just give a nice clean black. The other thing is, and so you just have like a little, they're really tiny. I don't know if you can remotely see that on camera, but then you also have like the, Micron pins are okay. I've used them before for a long time. They're kind of the same sort of thing. So the same build. I mean, they have pins out there that you can actually use these types of ink with and then draw with it and all that sort of stuff. But the cleanup's kind of a mess and that sort of thing. So that's why these are kind of nice, a nice good and modern invention. Otherwise you'd have to refill those inks manually and the pen itself. I mean, these pins, I think, cost like $5 each, which isn't bad per se, but then when you start getting to those mechanical ones or even the, it's too bad I don't have any of the Japanese um, pins that I'm seeing, but they're, the, basically they have a really nice distribution of the ink off, off of the pin. It just, it's, it's probably the best flow where the speedball just doesn't have that, I don't know. I never had good luck with them, so anyway, kind of, there's that. <laughs> see, see, you never knew you were asking that big of a question. <laughs> you never knew that was that big of a question. I will actually use some of that ink, though. I will water it down, and that's where you kind of get this watercolor. Let me get rid of the color here. So that's where you actually get a lot of this is watercolor. But I also did a little bit of airbrush on this too. So like these spots, that's all watercolor. But I, but actually it's with this ink. So that's a cool thing is that you can water it down and then accomplish really cool stuff with it like this and get a watercolor feel to it. But then at the same time, then I did like um, airbrush with it, which is where like your Copic markers and all those sort of things can, can kind of roll with. Let's see here. How are we doing? Okay. I'll do this. So. So I have this broken. So you have like your flat layer. You can see my flat layer is basically the same as my color layer. 
they're one and the same. Basically what you do is you duplicate them. And then I have like an action that I use up here. Actions are really useful where you can create kind of workflows and skip steps. So I have a few actions that I have up here that I then I use to, so basically what that means is that when I go to, let's, so I think, not quite sure, I'll select that one, we'll kind of see. There it goes. So it looks like I have this broken down. Oh, okay, so in this one, I have it broken down into groups. So I have, and you can kind of, so I have that group, which is the background basically selected and it's automatically selected, but then I have it broken up into, I broke that up into further as far as the head. So you have the headdress. Let's see here, headdress right here. So there's that, I wonder, I think there's that's one group, that one's group. So it basically broke it on into different colors. And it's just easier to paint it that way because then you're not dealing with everything. The other really cool thing is, is I don't have to select it. So this is always the hard part, especially after if you've been away from a project for a little bit. I've been saving these and I'm doing other things to try to figure out what I want to do with these. Hmm. I think the best way of tackling this go. Because when you're working on something, you always get in a flow of how to best work through it. <laughs> the best way to work through it. And so you, you gain that those insights. But then obviously when you step away, it's just like all that kind of goes out the window. So whatever you were learning from it, you have to relearn it and re figure out what the world you did here. So top, so this might be the top guy, middle guy, lower guy. Okay. Reason why, one reason why. So if I select this guy and let's say what I can do is I can actually go to my levels here or let's do here in saturation, for example. And I can change this up so I can make him more vibrant if I wanted to. Can I do it that way? There we go. <laughs> so I can, maybe not that vibrant. <laughs> so let's, here, let's get rid of that. I'll do the hue again. Yeah, there it did. Yeah, right. So then you're just messing with just this this layer right here. So if we wanted to turn up the brightness while well, these other layers, I can turn down the brightness. So and that's why you work it with it in one layer like that, where you're just affecting that one. And you're not affecting anything else. You can do it this way too, where let me select this. We'll go back up to this layer. We'll do this. And we'll do this. So now you can see over here, basically made a clippy mask where you're just messing with it. So anything in the white area right there is actually going to, and you can't see, yeah, you can see it. So anything in that white area, you just can't see part of my color palette. Is that, that's, that's what's going to be basically visible when you make these adjustments. And it's not going to affect or take away color. And it's not going to or make it really bright or darker, push him further into the background. So when I push him further in the background, he really pops out. So that goes back to this, where he's really pushed way in the background. And that really pops everything out, which is really important to do, to do or show. So in any case. Let's do this. Hmm. So 
which might be a little bit more harder to do. So I want to just mess with this red part. So I'm actually going to go up here to my... Actually, I'll group these. So you sometimes have to figure this part out too. You just have a lot of everything else in there. And they're still selectable, even though you have them turned off. So basically what I'm gonna end up doing is just make its own I want some of that red to pop through the yellow. So I'm doing it this way. Just like that. I'm gonna delete this one. There we go. Yeah, so <laughs> there probably see I haven't been in this thing for a long time. I can't remember what I was doing with it. Always takes a little bit. There we go. Now we're getting closer. So there's two ways of painting this, which one way I'm kind of currently doing right now, but you can also select portions like this. And I can push that out. So then you can have a really hard line right there that you might use, or you can kind of pull it back just a little bit, still have that line there. So some different things you can do with that. I do. So really with this, I want the light to come from this way. So that's the other thing that I'm kind of thinking about right now. So the light's coming from this way, and so I need to be just aware of how I'm doing that. So maybe I pull that back just a little bit, add a little bit more color, because when you have less light, you're actually your colors get a little bit more neutral. So 
add that back and then we'll be a little too dark. Super cool. Now, I want to do bringing that. It's like a reflection, is kind of what I'm thinking. I need that darker. <laughs> I feel like I'm Bob Ross now. <laughs> Legend. Nice. That looks good. A little bit more intensity in here too. Nice. I think that'll work. side but not a lot I want to awesome all right now I'm gonna go back in and add in our yellow oops Kind of do the same thing here. I'm going to actually bring that over the top, and then actually I'll bring those together. Bring that down. So it's kind of, we do something like that, which is pretty cool. The cool thing is with this, and I'm just working on the yellow. I'm not working, I'm not touching, because you're not even, yeah, you're not even, which is the really cool part of using these. That would take so much time because for me to select everything and then kind of keep going from there. So that's kind of where that is.
And the other thing I could do, so instead of making the opacity, I could do this. We'll bring in some of the red into it. That gives it a little bit more of one look. It also darkens it up too. But adds a little bit of that one side there. And then what I could do is, let me see what this looks like. So I could bring it down just a little bit too. But I don't want to go too far at this point because, okay, that's pretty good. And now I, if I work on the middle next, I think I'll wrap it all up. But then I'm also, because this is not including like stages like texture and all those sort of things, which we can add in later through Photoshop, which is pretty cool. Not to mention the texture that's already existing within it. So that'll pop through. And we'll do a bit darker. So that's a little too dark, but that'll work for right now. And we'll bring it back. That's pretty cool. That's pretty good. It's something like this. And I'll inverse this, which would be pretty cool. Because I don't want I don't want to mess with that. Well, I'll do right now actually. And I'll inverse it. Now something like this. So you get a little bit of that shadow in there too. Like there's only it's like two sources of light. Maybe it's the action in front of them and then somewhere else. different yellow in there to bring a little bit of
a little bit of shine to it. Cool. And then, I can do it selected this way and I can create different effects too. Because maybe the light source is right here. I mean, we're thinking about the, the global light source, but maybe like we're going to make his sword like really pop. And so something like that makes it look really cool. Reflective light right there. Cool, and that's a pretty good start. And so then we don't necessarily at this point in time, I don't even touch like, so I have like, you probably maybe saw it, uh, an FX tab. So in here, I kind of almost do, actually, I should do it this way. So with if with my FX tab, then what I can do is this actually will become a, a screen. There. And it looks like nothing's there, but I do all my effects on this, and that's kind of happens later on. But that's kind of a good place to stop with that, and then I kind of move on to the to the rest there. And it could be where I don't. And so I, I really, at this point in time, uh, it's knocked back quite a bit. So that's pretty bright, just as is. So I, I could do everything at that, but I knowingly, I know it'll get knocked at back quite a bit, ultimately, to its kind of its its final state, because I don't want, yeah, someone in there, I'm guessing. But then you can see just by that how just brighter this is just it really makes it come forward. And then when we add in further effects and that type of thing, it'll make it pop even more forward as I get into this. So um, it's nine o'clock. That's about all the energy I have tonight. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for contributing to the crowdfund. I think we're almost 50% of the way there. Uh, Yeah, so we're almost 50% of the way there, which is absolutely fantastic. And do this. Which is really exciting. Oh, we're like points away. Um, so that's really exciting. Uh, certainly share this out, share far and wide. I couldn't do this without you, and I really certainly appreciate uh, all the effort and uh, I will be putting in a lot more effort in these next couple of days as we wrap this up. And I'm really excited. And again, share this far and wide. And we'll get this thing crowdfunded together. And then we'll kind of go from there as to the next steps. And I'll keep you updated as what those next steps look like. And as we shared in, our, in the video early on. And I think, I think that's it. I think that's all I got for tonight. I hope you guys have an... Hope you all... And uh, certainly for those that are watching right now, uh, have a wonderful night. Appreciate you and excited to see these next steps and finally have this project uh, finished and, and moving on with life and on to, to really cool things. And uh, hopefully, I'm really uh, hoping that you'll like the story that I've put together thus far with this. And uh, 